Mark Breyer Cafe. Can I get a round of applause? And if you notice the logo, um, it says since 1972. And if you can do the math, that would lead you to understand that this is actually the 50th year of Phil and the Town Crier. So let's have a round of applause for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I also want to say let's be incredibly thoughtful about our wait staff tonight. They are working very hard for you, Jessica and Samantha. Thank you so much for all you're doing to make us have a good time this evening. All right, so we are going to get started. I have my clipboard, which makes me the official therapist for the evening. Um, I'm going to introduce our first couple. They actually are singer-songwriters who've been performing together since 2000. They have three albums to their name, and they're currently working on a fourth, they just told me today. They are facilitators with Dara Williams at her annual singer-songwriter musical uh, camp that she holds here in the Hudson Valley. And they're the winner of the 2017 Connecticut Folk Music Songer Songwriting Competition. Please, please give a warm round of applause to Michelle and Rick Gedney of Open Book. <laughs> All right, our next singing songwriting duo hails from New Jersey and Kentucky, so we're going to get into that for sure throughout this evening. <laughs> They have written and performed and recorded music all over this country and Europe. They are, most recently, have shared their work on the American Songwriter Platform, and I know them from years ago when they were the house band at the Grand Ole Opry Outpost down in Times Square in New York City. Please welcome Annalise and Ryan. All right, and last but certainly not least, we have a singing songwriting duo that comes from New Jersey and Poughkeepsie. Uh, they have produced five records. They were featured at Woodstock in 94. They performed with Bon Jovi, Belinda Carlisle, the Pure Prairie League. They are amazing singer-songwriters, dear friends. Please welcome the Maverick Pop duo, The Costellos. So, this is couples therapy. So we're gonna have some fun tonight and sort of get into some interesting issues as couples and music collaborators and just have some fun. So just to start us off, I wanna go around and understand from each of you how long you have actually been a couple. So Ryan and Annalise, we'll start with you. Gosh. Well. Funny we, you should ask. Yes, we recently celebrated our ninth wedding Nice. So we have uh, been together for 15 years. Congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah. So together for 15, married for nine. Yes. Together 15, married for nine. Wonderful. Yes. Excellent. Rick, Michelle, how about you? Uh, so we are about to celebrate our ninth as well. Uh, so we've been together for 22 years. Wow, that's great. Round of applause. Thank you. So it sounds like there's a little something about like musicians don't like to commit too quickly, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. 22 to 9, 15 to 9. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. There's a theme it took here, a little I while think. To, uh, commit. A little bit of time there. And so on that note, Bob and Lynn, how long have y'all been together? We met in 91, and we are about to celebrate our 28th anniversary. Hi. Congratulations. That was 1891. <laughs> So you know what, Bob and I have to ask you, let's like, have you lead us in. So I want to know, you've been together for almost 28 years, celebrating 28 year anniversary. Married, but longer, I guess, what's the math on that, 30 something, whatever. Yeah, a long time. A long time. <laughs> Some days longer than others. Yes. So when you, when you think back to the beginning of your work together, what were some of the first moments? Like what was the first song you heard on the radio? Or what was one of those first special moments for you? Thank you. 
but we had kind of had a whole life of wanting to pursue music and, and we both had children that we were raising. So we finally made the time to, to go out and kind of immerse ourselves in this community again. And um, I saw Rick playing mandolin with, a, with another friend of mine and I got a gig, my first gig, at the town crier in Pauling. So I was so nervous to play by myself that I asked Rick if he'd like to accompany me. And so we just started playing together, backing each other up for a few years. Um, and we became kind of musical partners and then it started to dawn on us that we might have something more. So, uh, so it was very organic and it was really the music that brought us together. So, um, so I think that's a good way to build a relationship. And, um, we're going to play a song that's going to be on our upcoming record, and um, just a, a little story about it. We work at the songwriting retreat with our friend Dora Williams every uh, summer, and I started to realize um, about eight years into it that the spark that, that everybody feels when they're they're meeting their, their people and feeling that sense of community, um, I kind of missed that excitement that we had when we first met. So I, I wrote this song kind of as a, a longing for that time and also an appreciation for that connection. And it's called Would You Still.
for the event. Thank you so much. So, so we learned about driving hours and hours to get to somebody for something is really resonates with me. Thank you, and that is a really, it's a true story. When we were first getting together, I, I decided to buy a new guitar, and Rick drove from North Carolina overnight to meet me at the guitar store. Yes, nice. <laughs> And we've all had those experiences, right? Where you're doing those crazy things, making crazy choices just to get to that person. So, Annalise and Ryan, like, what are some of the most interesting things that happened in the beginning of your relationship that led to where you are today? Well, interesting enough, <laughs> when uh, Annalise and I first met, she had a boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> she had recently moved to New York City. Uh, yeah, so uh, I got my degree in musical theater actually, and uh, as did Ryan, so we were both actors for several years. Respect. So respect. Did you also get theater? Yes, so we stick together. Um, so yeah, so it was kind of the thing where I was moving to New York City and you meet you know, one person and you meet like 25, especially in the theater community. So we met and uh, yeah, you know, I had this boyfriend who had been long distance for a couple of years, even before I had moved to the city and uh, that's Ryan, and I'm like, well. Well, so I, I'll take over I from like here. I like this guy. So I was like, man, this girl's awesome. And uh, I was like, but she's a boyfriend, and I'm a stand-up dude, so I'm not trying to work myself into anybody else's situation. I'm not trying to be a cog, or, anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so basically, I'm like, how can, I, how can I ask this girl to hang out without asking her out or looking the way? So I was like, why don't you come over and jam? Because we were both also, you know, played instruments and were singer-songwriters at that time as well. Right, so we and you were definitely that. much more, you'd always kind of been that, and I was just kind of starting to, I, I played guitar since, you know, end of high school and college, but those first, like, seven years were just to impress girls at parties, and I did, like, four songs, and that was it, you know? <laughs> and so I was just coming out of like, that stage into, like, the, oh, I can play more than four songs, and I can write my own songs, you've been doing it for a long time. So I kind of use that as an excuse to hang out with Annalise a lot more. Come over, we'll jam. Come over, we'll jam. So one of the cool things I think about us is that even before the relationship was there, uh, I guess similar to you guys, the music was there. Uh, it was part of it. It's been there since the get-go. Yeah. And then I went away to do a, a show, and then on April and Fool's Day. And I broke day, up with the guy on April Fool's Day. <laughs> he did not think it was a joke, though. <laughs> he um, yeah, so this song is kind of a non sequitur. It's, it's one of our newer ones. I guess I will say uh, something that we've always loved as musicians is, you know, when we play with bands or we, uh, you know, in lineups with other musicians, we always love input um, and the, the idea of community. And here in Beacon, we, we love the community here. And we've been a part of, um, we were part of a songwriting group for a bit where you submit like a weekly song based on a prompt. So this tune is, uh, is one of those. This is called uh, I've Been Around. It's still pretty new.
more about how each of you met and got to know each other and working together, I want to move into the really good, juicy stuff and talk about how opposites attract and sort of where some of the challenges might be, right, in your relationship, because relationships are amazing and not easy. <laughs> this is what they paid for. Exactly, right? Here's the good stuff. So before we go, Lynn, are you good with your guitar? Is it? We're gonna find out in a minute because you made a switch. Awesome. So let's start with you two. This was your brainchild. So let's talk about opposites attracting, right? So what are some of the qualities that you see in yourselves as being opposite of your partner and that have over time sort of uh, elevated or gotten better or you know what what are some of the what does that bring up for you? <laughs> That's a smart man right there. That's a smart man. <laughs> I will say I am way more patient than I have. Oh, wait. No, no. I have, I have taught him patience, especially with young children running around. He has learned that, but he is very, um, very focused, very organized, which he has taught me because I am not that. Whatever. So those are, do you agree with that? You might disagree. Yeah, Bob, do you agree? Oh my God, what the hell do you think I'm gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> of course I agree with that too. What, no, no, she's, she's spot on. Now, however, I do think we have a lot of similarities. Like what? I don't agree with the, for me, the opposite of track thing doesn't work. I've looked through my span of 130 years on the planet and the majority of my really tight friends, we have one huge thing in common. Always have weekend banner. Obviously, music for us is, is a big deal. And she pop a lot of my sayings and lines at times, right? That you think are yours. But they <laughs> <laughs> so one of you is the originator of the idea, and the other one is the follower of both of you. I think, you think we, we, have a, we have a very lively household, yes. if I can say that. That's great. <laughs> a very lively very household, nice. which is super fun. Yeah. I love the fact that since we met, we have been writing music and never stopped together since 1991, which I love. I think Fantastic. 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 You brought up two villains and daughter all at the same yep. time. Now you have So Matt, about. I'm using Bob's now. He's in the DI Yeah, I'll hear it. You hear it? Yeah. It's out here, yeah. right? All right. Is that, Is that thing in tune? Is that Thank you, Matt. Yeah, so. And a big shout out to Matt for coming here. Right. Yeah, Matt, 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 Excellent. And Bob, did you, you know, like I have a prop with my clipboard. Did you particularly? Yeah, I do. So a little bit about the song, like you folks, the next two we're going to do are really new. They're so new that I've got a hidden cheat sheet because I wrote the lyrics and Lord knows I have no clue what I wrote. But I can tell you how it happened. So it's Sunday. Halloween Sunday of this year. And we're pretty, well, I like melancholy. Melancholy is cool and I love Sundays. And I love clouds. So Lynn was away, it's Halloween, and Halloween in my neighborhood is a madhouse. So of course I was left in charge. Our house is the best house to come yeah. to in our neighborhood, by the way, <laughs> next year. But however, so I'm walking around Main Street. So a couple of weeks passed, I've written a bunch of musical beds, but I was way stuck on lyrics, stuck on stories, and how I like to write is, I back out of titles. So I'll come up with a title and try to concoct some sort of story out of it. And then musically, their chords are, are three notes you play together, and I like starting with chord bed. So I had somewhat of a title, but I had nothing. Switch a little bit. There's this guy named Dan Rome. He's a business guy, and he wrote this book called Back of the Napkin that I have to agree with. Any decent business plan or anything you've got in your life, it should go on a napkin. So it turns out, while I'm walking down Main Street, it's around four o'clock. Why wouldn't I stop into a libation board for a libation? <laughs> so I stopped in and I go into my pocket and I pull out a napkin and I have a prop. This is no joke. Probably, I say five minutes, seven minutes later, I had the next song. And this is chords, melody, chorus, it just popped. And I think these folks can all tell you that, I mean, Beethoven never believed in inspiration. He's like, you write music, you write music every day, you pound it out. 
But sometimes the world works in mysterious ways and you just get hit with something. And I'm sitting at this libation port and I had that, I had a pen and I'm going nuts and Mark says, what are you writing? I said, I'm the laundry list, whatever. But anyway, the name of the song is Back Home. And it's another sappy one. I read all the love tunes for this one. So this one's for Lynn. And see if I remember it. She seems lost without her. Wishing me was home. She seems lost without him. Wanting him to come, needing him to come back. He will find his way back home.
that we did here. We I came up with this, and Bob has added some lovely, lovely things. We called it. It was uh, right on the Delaware, but the road, the driveway, it was up this very steep hill, so we used to go. We always used to say we're going up on the hill. That was our mom, our grandparents, our mom's house, and dad. And uh, so this is called the hill. <laughs> separately that you most miscommunicate about? Um, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Watch it, my friend. Watch it. <laughs> well, my answer to this is we're not going to agree on the same thing, so. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. Uh, I, I think there's just miscommunication, like misunderstanding of words 
that are said. <laughs> Rick, did you know that? Like I, I, I said, I said it in a certain way. You shouldn't take it like that. Right? Uh, that kind yeah. of thing that goes it's on. Intonation. Yeah. Don't. And doesn't that's everybody that's suffer from this? <laughs> I have literally no idea of what you're talking what? about. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. solid background in music theory. I have virtually none. So when I'm trying to communicate to him what it is that I'm hearing or wanting to play, he's like, you know, he, he does double duty of having to translate what it is I'm thinking. And so I give him credit for his patience and kindness. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> so there you go. Even in the realm of talking yeah, about conflict and misunderstanding, S it's still a win S for score you. Score one for me. <laughs> Are there any particular songs or anything that come to mind when you think about that? Um, I think I think well, the song that we're, we're we have queued up is one of Rick's songs that um, he wrote this book this past year. Um, Rick is a lot less prolific than I am, and um, it, it's fine because he's painting. He does oil paintings and landscape paintings. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, art. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Show right now in. It's a good excuse. It's a show right now. Cold so Press at the oh, it's Buster, at Buster, Lady, Lady, Buster Lady Gallery. It's incredible. You should go. Yes, I agree. Like the show. But I will say, when he writes a song, they're masterpieces. And this is one of my favorite songs of his. And so, <coughs> do you want to give a little background? Well, I was tired of cutting the grass, um, <laughs> so <laughs> so I decided to turn my front yard into a meadow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's just started from feeding birds and counting birds and, and watching birds. And then um, butterf uh, butterflies coming and, um, and then I, I really got into hummingbirds <clears throat> and set up hummingbird feeders and then reading up on that um, and And rainstorms. Yeah. Rainstorms. Is that rain? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful yes. summer spring rainstorms. The flowers are happy. <laughs> the hummingbirds will be happy. Um, and I'm happy because I don't have to cut the grass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this song came out of this, actually. <clears throat> and it's called A Meadow. Better world to 
during the pandemic, it was in the height of political craziness. And we were all watching entirely too much news and getting ourselves all worked up. So I made a promise to myself that I was going to start going for a daily walk, even in the snow, even in the rain, and uh, try to try to make some some moves to get myself outside more. And uh, so this song is called January Moves. <laughs> issues with health, and uh, I found myself, like, every time the phone rang, I would have, like, 
you know, an anxiety attack. And I, I felt like I was just taking on so much and, and I decided maybe not worrying about everybody else's troubles is, is okay. You know, that you can't change things by worry. Yeah. So it's just, it's a lesson to myself and I'm still trying to learn it. <laughs> and a lesson for all of us, actually. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Speaking of taking on other people's pain and relationships and places like that, right? You know, like uh, talk to me about that, Ryan and Elise. And, and one of the things that I wanted to also discuss was just this fact that you know what I think is so interesting as musicians in relationship is that you essentially have a whole other way of communicating. You speak a whole other language. Um, so tell me about that as well. What is that like? I would say we still speak it in very different ways. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, we, uh, I think we, we find ways to complement each other through it, but um, as far as like our approach to music, I would say like, I'm much more of a kind of lyric driven, I kind of know what I want, like what I'm setting out to do, and I'm very like perfectionist, you know, I kind of hear it in my head, sometimes even before I like try it out, you know, whereas I feel like Ryan is the opposite. He's just like, ah, what comes out? Like, yes, yeah, so I tend to throw up songs. Which, you know. <laughs> they just kind of like, oh, it's a song, all right. Oh. It, uh, <laughs> you sift through it. And then, yes, yeah, right, right. It kind of drives me crazy, but also it's something that I like really admire because I wish I had that ability to just like not care and just like, oh, whatever, we'll see what but it she sounds like. she doesn't you know? like it because I, I'm also like, I don't so much care about lyrics. So like if we're in the car yeah. and the song comes on, I sing along, whether I know the lyrics or not. <laughs> I come up with great lyrics for all sorts of songs. And Alternative it, lyrics. It's literally like I can't help myself but be like, you know the lyric is actually this, right? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't care. Now, to, to the point where after all these years, he sings the wrong words on purpose, just to set me off. What was the one with the yacht? It was one that said it was a yacht. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, it was, uh, oh my gosh, it was something. Um, the girls were saying, doing it, come at, going on a yacht instead of... But it's something, yeah, like, yeah, uh, it's like a, like, like a new, like, hip-hop song, and it's yeah. just like... <laughs> <laughs> so, with the song, we'll, we're all uh, around. Can I, can I finish tuning? Sure. Is that not my guy? Well, I think. It's a mandolin, you gotta get her free. That's, That's right. right, and this is a 1968 uh, Batwing mandolin. With a Purchased gold foil pickup. Purchased at Jake's Main Street Music. Yeah. Shout out to Jake. So, you yeah, know, from. I understand mandolin is Italian or out of tune. Is that right? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> me being the perfectionist, I like to try to work against that, but we'll see. But yeah. Especially since it's double string, it's like, what can you do? But yeah, this old girl sometimes needs a, a little extra love. For this song, we're doing hollow, right? Sure. Yeah. And then when the rain? Sure. Cool. Maybe the rain so, will start again. I know. We have a song called When the Rain, and I was like, when the rain started for your I was like, man, that rain couldn't have waited 10 more minutes. It would have been perfect. Come on. Come on, rain. There's um, still hope. It's still going to happen. That's true. Um, this song we're going to play, we wrote, uh, we've gone out to San Diego for a number of years to do a songwriting project. And we, uh, the two of us and another guy that we play with out there, we had sat down and tried to write a song about like a second of time, right? You, just, you hear, you write these songs and these stories, and sometimes they're long stories, sometimes they're short stories, but like, what if we could, but you know, sometimes there's like just a moment in life that could feel like a lifetime. Like, what if we could write a song about just a moment uh, in time? And we decided to write a song about a moment in time when, when you're kind of coming, coming to waking up and maybe a, a new person in your life is no longer there with you. I don't know, I'm saying too much. Yeah, it's just about a moment. Yeah, it's just about a moment. Sure. Hey, yeah. Still 
just a broken record Spinning round again It's just a broken record Spinning round Side of life where we do a lot of work in different projects and we spend a lot of time on the road doing things separate and then we'll be on the road or back in town and playing and we're together 24 7 so we have this kind of you know a lot of couples kind of go off for eight to ten hours a day and come back together each night you know and yeah. we tend to go away don't see each other for four or five months and then see each other non-stop for two or three months you <laughs> know true. i think this year was coming back to the pandemic so the pandemic ended that for us which was Nice that we still cared about each other after spending two years together not stop. Yeah. It seems to still work out. It's probably the best test for our, for our marriage. Yeah. But, uh, sure. you know, we came back to it this year, and I think January until the end of April, we had spent maybe five days together this year. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, That's crazy. Which, like, you know, that means great. You know, we're back to life, but also, like, eh. Yeah. It's not great being apart. <laughs> but we also, like uh, Bob and Lynn, tend to write songs separate and bring them to each other. And... Mm -hmm. This next song I wrote when I was working down at a theater in North Carolina, North Carolina, a little south of Asheville, called the Flat Rock Playhouse. Beautiful theater, been around a long time. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, and so there, down there, it's, the forest down there is you know really intense, and, and it's situated in the mountains. And when it rains, like it just was on the canopy there, it's it's just the most spectacular sound. It's so intense. And I was just sitting out there doing this like, we don't run to baby, win it all. Put it on my phone for a little while, and then like five years later, I pulled it out, and uh, we were upstate with a friend of ours named Lincoln, the guy who actually booked at the, at the uh, Opera City stage, and now becoming a good friend of ours. We met him there at Opera City stage. And uh, the song came out of it, and it's great. And the song is very apropos to the question, because it's kind of that moment. We call it a, what is it, what an anti- we ended up calling it like a, a post love song. We don't write a lot of love songs. We hardly write really yeah. any, but we kind of started. So this is one of the first, and it's like um, the, it's like a conversation between two people, sort of after um, after the honeymoon phase is over, right? Yeah, and that moment like, of like, are we going to keep this going or not? Right. You're like things are in the balance, and you're weighing like, you know, is this worth it? You know, why why am I here? You know, and um, you know, ultimately. It's kind of a question song, but you know, we, we like to think it ends happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, let you all decide. Yeah.
wash away the stain. The lies they lie behind us. Now there's only love to gain. Yeah. Mm -hmm.